question two. A plank AB of length eight meters and mass 12 kilograms. Well, I don't know um, that it's uniform, um, so I, I don't know where the center of mass is. So I can't really mark the 12 uh, kilograms. I'll just underline that for now. The plank rests on two supports. One support is at C, where AC is three meters, and the other support is at D, where AD is X meters. A block of mass three kilograms is placed on the plank at B. So let's just mark its weight 3G. The plank rests in equilibrium in a horizontal position. That means all of the forces in one direction balance out with all of the forces in the opposite direction. The magnitude of the force exerted on the plank by the support at D is twice the magnitude of the force exerted by the uh, plank on the support at C. So if I mark this reaction force as R, then I can mark this one in terms of R as well, so 2 R. Uh, the plank is modelled as a uniform rod, so there we have it. Now we know that the um, weight acts in the centre, so 12 G, and that's halfway along the rod, so 4 metres. Um, and the block is modelled as a particle as normal. Find the value of X. So we have several um, things that we can do. We can take moments and we can also resolve vertically, which is usually, uh, it usually leads to a simpler equation. We have um, an unknown R and an unknown X, so we'll need two equations. So we'll need to resolve vertically and to um, take moments. So first of all, resolving vertically, um, in upwards I have R plus 2R. Notice I'm not simplifying these because you get a mark for just writing out with all the terms and if you try and simplify and get it wrong you could lose your method mark. So 12G downwards and 3G downwards. And simplifying that 3R equals 15G so R equals 5G. So now I'm going to take moments. And I could take moments, quite often it would be sensible to take moments about one of these points so that I could rule out the force that's acting at that point because its distance would be zero. However, with this one, I'm not going to be ruling out R by taking moments here because I still have an R here and likewise if I take moments about D. So I think the most sensible place to take moments about is probably A because I've got lots of neat distances from A. So. Uh, about A. Um, so moments uh, go either clockwork, clockwise or anticlockwise. If you're unsure, it's worth just putting your finger on where you're taking the moments about as if that was um, a central point um, in a circle. And then um, R goes about that point in an anticlockwise direction and 2R also goes anti-clockwise. I'm turning my pencil around as if it's going around that point and this force of 12g is going anti-clockwise and 3g going anti-clockwise as well as if you your pencil was on a string attached to A. So these anti-clockwise moments will balance out with the clockwise moments because the plank is in equilibrium. So I have um, 3 times R plus x times 2r is equal to 4 times 12g plus 8 times 3g. And again, I haven't simplified that equation at all yet. So now I'm going to substitute in my values for um, r. So 3 times 5g plus x times, well that will be 10g, it's 2r, and then 48g plus 24g gives me 72g. Now you'll notice that now all of the terms are multiplied by g, so I can divide through the equation as I can divide every term in the equation on each side by g. 
So that simplifies down to 15 plus 10x equals 72. So 10x equals 57 and x equals 5.7 meters. I'm just going to check that for uh, to see whether it's reasonable or not. I'm f trying to find the distance x from a to here. I know that this distance is 4 and this distance is 8, so I'm expecting a distance between 4 and 8, and indeed that's between 4 and 8. Marks-wise, for the um, equations that you're making, um, there's a method mark for each one on the basis that you've included all terms and that the um, when you're especially when you're taking moments that you have a force multiplied by a distance in each case so if you miss out the force or, or miss out the distance then you're not going to get that method mark accuracy wise you'll get um, an accuracy mark for all terms included and all terms correct um, or you'll get two accuracy marks for that and um, they'll deduct a mark for each error. For the second part, again, there are two accuracy marks, all terms correct, and um, subtracting one for um, each term that's incorrect. So if you've got two or more incorrect, then you don't get any marks for that part, the accuracy marks. And then a final accuracy mark for the final answer correct.